Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, thanks once again for tuning into the Zim Geek Channel. Today, it's another adventure in cartooning. We're going to be cartooning Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> Hang on, this ought to be fun. And don't forget our rules of cartooning. All you need is paper and pencil and a good eraser. Make sure you draw a light because we're going to be using that eraser. And most importantly, don't get frustrated. Here we go. Minnie and Mickey, everybody knows these characters, so it's very easy to be frustrated when you're drawing them if it doesn't look exactly right. Just keep in mind, this is one of the first times that you've drawn them or tried to draw them, and hopefully we'll get through this together pretty quickly and we'll have fun doing it. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to take our... We're going to take our paper and we're going to turn it sideways. Like they say, it's hot dog as opposed to hamburger. If you think about where the halfway point is, uh, say if that's about there, you're going to want to put, we're going to put Mickey on one side. We're going to put Minnie on the other side. You definitely don't have to draw this on your paper. This is just so that you know, Mickey is going to be looking at Minnie. Minnie is going to be looking at Mickey and they're going to be holding hands. So leave a little space off the top of your paper because you know Mickey has those big ears and Minnie has that hat. So we're going to start with a circle. Now the version of Mickey that we're going to be drawing is the modern retro version of Mickey. The one that they've done the, the most recent cartoons on. So it's going to be loose. It's going to be simple. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, don't let it frustrate you. You see how big I made Mickey's head there? We're going to make Minnie's head the same size. For bodies, we're going to use a little bit, a couple lines here at the neck, and then it's just going to loop down and around and right back up. Not a big bean that you see in a lot of the other Mickeys, and in fact, if you look at the size of the head, the body is probably going to be the same size. And then make sure you leave a little space down here for the feet, of course. You're going to want to do the same thing with Mickey or with Minnie, I mean, leaning in, get rid of any lines that get in your way. Don't be afraid to get sketchy with it. That's, that's why you draw light, so that you can go through and erase whatever you need to erase. Mickey's feet, just a couple of lines, probably not even that long. And with this version of the character, the closer they get to the ankles, they're going to be a little bit wider than when they're at the body. And of course, if they're not, if they're too wide, you can always cut it back down. You're thinking probably half of the size of the body for the legs and the and the shoes. And his shoes, he's going to have one foot in front of the other. Right now, we're just going to use some loops. One foot in front of the other. Now that second foot's going to come up a little higher than the first foot, just to show that it's back behind the first foot. Now, Minnie, Minnie's legs. A little bit daintier, not by much. And then she's going to come out to circles. Not quite circles, but big ovals. Not too big. And other versions of Minnie, you see that her shoes here are pointed. In this version, they're not. It's going to be a very dull point. And just wrapped around. Mickey's hand on this side is going to come out. I'm going to wipe out these lines here I was using to show you how big the heads are. It's going to come out a little ways. And again, I drew that in the opposite direction. I'm so used to drawing Mickey in another version that uh, starts large at the body and gets thinner at the wrist. And this character does not work like that. He starts thin, thinner at the body, and gets just a little wider at the wrist. Hand out here, hand out there. Oh, now you see how far away they are? That's my fault. And with the wonders of Photoshop, I can grab and I can push that Mickey a little closer and I can grab and I can move that Minnie a little closer. You don't have that luxury. That's what, why you always draw light. Use your eraser and you can fiddle with it until it looks right to you. I'm going to move them just a little bit closer. Still have the center line right there so that we know. And that's just a rough guess as to where that center line is. 
and we're going to have them holding hands together. And the way we're going to show that is we're going to put a circle right there for now. Minnie's hand comes out. It's a little bit more dainty and it goes in a downward sloop, a swoop than Mickey's hand that goes in an overhead swoop. And both of those hands end up again in circles, just like we covered hands a couple of videos back. Now, Mickey and Minnie are looking at each other, yes, but that doesn't mean that they're in profile to each other. So we're going to use, in fact, they're, they're at about a three-quarter view. So we're going to run some guidelines in for where they're looking. At halfway across where the face is, we're going to draw a curved line. Think of the head as a ball. Another curved line along the bottom. Same thing with many. Curved line, curved line. Normally on a person, you would, you would put those eyes, nose, and mouth there. Mickey's not a person. Mickey's a mouse. So right where this line meets the end of that head, headline, up above that, a little bit over, we're going to draw, start with his nose. His nose is just an oval that's filled in. Same thing with Minnie. Now, both of these characters look exactly the same, except for in the feet. Minnie has got more dainty feet than Mickey does. But just about everything else stays the same, except for the clothes and Mickey's, or Minnie's, I should say, eyelashes. Mickey's mouth, mouth Mickey's nose, I should say, is going to drape right about to that halfway point, And it's going to do a nice curve all the way around, all the way down to the bottom of his head. Same thing with Minnie. You can start a, a little farther over than halfway if you want. It's going to loop right around, curve right down along to the bottom of the head. And at this point, you can go through and erase the guidelines that the nose are in front of because we don't need those anymore. We've got that nose situated right where we want it to go. Now, we kept the center of the headline there on purpose so that we can put those eyes in. There's going to be one on both sides. They're going to be large ovals on both sides of there. That line. Now, the far one can be tucked around the nose just a little bit. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. All depends upon the drawing and the person who's drawing them. Inside the eye here, we're going to draw a little triangle to show the direction of where Mickey's looking. This is an old, old animation trick so that they didn't have to throw a whole lot of detail in there. Those eyes get filled in. A lot of the students that I work with says that it looks like a squashed black Pac-Man. And same thing with Minnie. You're going to have those triangles pointing in the direction that she's looking. You see Mick, Minnie is looking that way. Mickey is looking that way. So the, the arrow in the eyes are pointing in that direction. And if they don't look right, now's the time to fudge with them a little bit and work with them. Make them look right. Fill them in. Nice big eyes. Now the difference between Mickey and Minnie, of course, Minnie's got those little feminine touches. Minnie does, and one of those are three eyelashes here on her eye. Always on the outside of the eye, on both sides. Both characters are going to be smiling. Mickey doesn't have any eyelashes. He doesn't have any eyebrows either, though he's very easy to show expression with. Now with their smiles, their smile can start just above that center line. It's going to curl down and towards the nose. And we're going to open the mouth up. Now the big thing with that is that both of these characters have bottom lips. That go outside the head. And once they do that, you can erase the part of the head that that lip is in front of. You want it to go just a little bit outside the head. And again, this emphasizes the mouth more keeps the cartoony working inside of those mouths both of them have a tongue which is a couple of curved lines and you can fill those in if you so desire if you're going to ink them you can fill that in later there we are look at that now let's let's finish the heads on both of these characters since we got them there 
Let's start with Minnie, because she's got that hat. Minnie's hat starts right where that center line hits the top of her head. It's going to come out just a little bit. It's going to go straight across, and it's going to come down again just in a little bit of a curved line. There's a little bit of a tilt there, a little backwards tilt, top of it. It's a little top to it, and then there's a little knot on it. Almost looks like a Chinese bowl. Then we have that wonderful, wonderful flower. Minnie has a daisy. Daisy, I don't think, has a flower. But there's a center part of the flower that's a circle. And the daisy always is five-pointed like a star. And again, that's a curved line out for the stem, circle for the center. Curved lines out and in, out and in, out and in, out and in. Just like a star. Minnie now has a hat. Now for the ears. We kept that line up here for a reason, and we're still going to keep that there for a little longer. Minnie's, Mickey's first ear is going to be right on top of his head, and it's going to be nice and round, not about half the size of his head. The other ear is going to start down below where the center line is, right above that center line. And you want to try to keep it as round and as close in size as the other ear. That's a little big. I'm going to go through and erase that just a little bit and shrink it down just a hair. Now remember, not everything you draw is always going to be perfect the first time through. Even the most experienced artists all make mistakes. That's why they have pencils. That's why your pencils have erasers on them. Don't be afraid. Don't let it frustrate you if your hand-eye coordination doesn't fit at 100% to start with. The other ear is back behind Minnie's ear, Minnie's first ear is behind that hat. It's gonna come out and curve around. And again, just like with drawing hands and drawing feet, or just like with drawing anything, if your circles, if you don't think your circles are right, if you don't think that they're circular enough, take a few minutes out and draw some circles on a piece of paper. Just grab a scrap piece of paper, draw a bunch of circles. So I've had a lot of students go, oh my goodness, you draw such perfect circles. Well, I have never, and I don't always draw a perfect circle. Nobody ever really draws a perfect circle all the time. It takes practice, just like with doing cartooning, a little bit of confidence, and keeping yourself from being frustrated. Now, we still kept those guidelines here on Mickey and Minnie. We haven't erased those yet because we're going to do the rest of the fur that go around his head. I tell the, the, the kids at school that it's still his hair. Wraps around his, his eye here, right to that center line. Right around to that center line, and it's going to curl again. Out and over, nice big arc, right between his eye and his mouth. Sometimes it can be a little sharper than that, depending upon the version of Mickey. And then it's going to curve again, all the way down to the bottom of his head, right before his bottom lip. Right there. Same thing with Minnie. It's going to curl around that eye, right to that point or right to that center line, around again, about halfway between the eye and that smile in her mouth. It's going to wrap around again, all the way down, just about right to where that's, that her mouth is, that bottom lip. Okay, now on the head, we can erase those guidelines. Just get rid of them. Nobody needs to see them. Nobody needs to even know they were there. That's all the part of the fun of cartooning. Now, that also helps you keep the characters constant and in, in dimension. And that's why you want to use guidelines in order to stay consistent, especially when you're cartooning or when you're doing a comic strip with a character that you have to draw over and over and over again. It's good to have a whole set of a rough outline in your head of what that character looks like so that you will always stay consistent. Dimensions are very important. You see how Mickey's head here, like I said, that's very big. That's about half. So this part here, where his ear is, is about as big as his legs and his feet. That's the way it works. If you keep these characters in their dimensions as close as you possibly can, and you keep them distinctive and yet keep them simple, you'll be able to draw them over and over again 
with ease. Now I'm going to go through and take a second and fill in the black spot here on Mickey and Minnie. You don't have to do this, especially if you're going to go through and, and go back over top of it with a felt marker or an ink pen or, or a, a, some sort of a method of inking. I'll do a video soon where we talk about all those other different stages. I'm just doing this so that you get the great idea or the main idea of what it's going to look like. Now, if you, the big thing to be careful with is that if you're filling this in with pencil, not to get that smear running up the side of your hand. That big pencil smear, get right across your paper if you're going phys or if you're drawing physically on pen using pencil and paper, which you should be. Everything all starts out with a rough drawing. Almost everything, even with the big guys, very rarely are they going to do all of their character design work digitally. They'll sit there and they'll do something physical to start with. Plus, when you go through and you ink out these ears, you can add whatever little extra bump you need if the circle doesn't look quite right. Filling it right in. Got to hurry up and do that so that we can get onto the body. There we go. That's pretty good. All right. Well, except for this spot right here. Do, do, do. Nothing to it but to do it. Look at that. Mickey and Minnie's head. Now let's go for their bodies. Mickey, well, let's do their hands next. Now, of course, they're going to be wearing those wonderful gloves. Right here at the wrist. They're rolled down right to the wrist. Mickey's got that little roll over here. Then there's the circle of the hand, the thumb. It's always pointed in. Mickey's hand here is relaxed, so we're going to draw that first finger. Then the other two fingers right next to it. And by the third one, you should be right at the edge of your circle. That'll keep it nice and spaced off out. Taking your eraser now, you can erase the circle, the part that hits the fingers, the part that hits the thumb. You're going to want to leave this line here, or at least some of it, but still erase the part of his wrist that his glove is in front of. All important detail, those three lines on the back of the hand. It's very important. They go right down where the middle of those fingers are. If, they had a, if you had a four-fingered character and you had those gloves, they'd ride right between the fingers. Those seams would. Now, many, same thing, same idea going to curve around that wrist, curve line on the wrist to show some shape, curve line all the way around in order to show the roll down of the glove, the thumb, sticks out or down, first finger, we're going to have that hand turned up just a little bit, make it look a little dainty, first finger, you can draw the whole finger, second finger is right behind that, third finger is right behind that, and you should be right at the side of that circle. You can go through and erase a circle that uh, the fingers are attached to or the thumb is attached to. And you can erase the side of the wrists and, of course, still also those three wonderful lines. Now, we're going to show them holding hands. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to put Minnie's hand on top. We're just going to draw one finger that almost looks like a thumb, doesn't it? Just add another finger next to it, another finger next to that. Their fingers aren't interlaced. It's just Minnie's hand is on top of Mickey's hand. You erase the lines that are, that are in the way. Finish off the finger. Finger doesn't go all the way back. Just see the, the side of it there. Mickey's hand is underneath. Same basic idea. Right around to the front, erase the lines that are in the way. Even redraw them if you have to, don't be afraid. That's a big part of not letting yourself get frustrated. The little curls there on their gloves. No thumbs. No thumbs. The thumbs are hiding back behind the two clasped hands. Actually, they're not. Minnie's thumb is tucked in underneath Mickey's hand here. Now, Minnie has a dress. 
of course. It's going to come down and curl around. There's a little bit here that follows the contour of her body, just a little bit. And then it's going to pop out because she's got a big frilly dress on. There's a little part that pokes out here. Another loop right there that should put you right at the start of the, almost at the start of the leg. Another loop here in front of the leg, right next to her other leg. Down here, underneath that thumb. And then back behind her, two more little bumps. We can erase the part of her body and that leg that the dress is in front of. Now, old school clothes. Minnie has got a pair of bloomers on underneath that skirt. And the way we show that, it's a little curve right here. Right where that dress, right where her dress picks up a little bit, and three little loops right there. Everything in modesty, family friendly. She's got a very old school bloomer on. She's got polka dots on her dress. They're not always in the same place. I I don't think at the same time. They probably move from uh, incarnation to incarnation, and that. See that circle? That didn't look good at all. Got rid of that in a hurry. Another circle here. One more circle right there. Another circle right there. Another circle. Not quite a circle, about a half a circle connected to that. And then two little parts of a circle there. Mickey, on the other hand, his shorts in this new, um, this modern retro character, his shorts are really, he's really too big for his britches. So his shorts hang out a little bit on both sides. They roll right down to the bottom part of his body. You can erase the part of his body that his shorts are in front of. And again, he's wearing shorts, so this short leg is going to come down, going to curve line around that leg and come right back up. We can erase the part, bottom part of the body and the part of the leg that that pant leg is in front of. Now the other pant leg is going to, and you want to show some dimension, some shape here, is going to be behind that. So we're going to leave this bottom line of his pants, the bottom part of his body. And we're going to throw that other short, the other leg of his shorts right there, just a couple of curved lines. We're going to erase the inside of his leg that the shorts are in front of. It's that easy. Just a couple curved lines. A little bit more emphasis to show to drop that that uh, leg of his pants back. First button. Now it's right in front. Those buttons are facing wherever he is. His body is pointed towards. The first button you're going to see the whole circle on. And then you're going to add a little dimension off here to the side. Almost so that it looks like a coin. And that comes in real handy when you go to draw that second button. Because it's wrapped around this side of his body. So all you're going to show is just the side of the coin right there. Now he's looking, and you can tell his pants are pointed directly towards Minnie. And now we can fill in both of their torsos, which, of course, you don't have to do, especially if you don't want that great big smudge on the side of your hand and you don't want to smear your paper. So be very careful if you do do that. Be very careful of that smudge. Clean hands are important. It's one of the reasons why the animators used to have to wear those crazy sweaty white gloves. When they were working uh, old school, they would have to draw these cartoons all by hand. And their first uh, test, the first version through, they drew everything on paper before they drew it on them expensive plastic cells using paint. So they used to have to deal with a uh, pencil all the time. Whenever you see a cartoon, especially the older cartoons, keep in mind that somebody had to sit at a desk and draw that cartoon at least uh, 12 to 24 times, depending upon the quality of the cartoon, in order to get the character to just move for a second. He's got his hands together. They have their hands together. They're looking longingly at each other. We can get rid of that middle note now. Now for their feet. Mickey's feet. His shoes look like socks that are rolled down. 
going to change my pen point back. Old school, old days, back in the 1920s, they used to have that as a fad. They used to roll their socks down. If you look, there are quite a few of the old school cartoon characters that have that roll down here. Uh, just in later versions of Mickey, they incorporated that into his shoe in order to just keep the look the same and so they don't have to explain, well, it's a sock that he rolled down. If you look at olive oil, olive oil from Popeye is a really good example of somebody who rolls their socks down. Now those those shoes are loops. Everything on here is nice and round and loopy. The front of it has a curve that comes down a little bit. The back of the shoe goes right back up to the sock, or what used to be the sock. Let's call it the top part of his shoe. And then he's got a little bit of a heel right there on the back of his shoe. Here on that other leg, we don't have to draw that whole shoe because it's back behind this shoe. This shoe's really it's got big feet, really in the way. Curved line around the ankle, above the above that line, couple of curved lines on both sides. We're going to erase the side of the leg on both sides. And again, we're going to add, it goes back a little farther. It's nice and round there. We don't have to draw the heel. Everything's back behind that shoe. We can even throw in a little shadow there, just like we did with the shorts. Mini, mini shoes. She's got high heels on. Kind of like heels. There'll be a little heel here and back. You can start on the back side of the ankle. Come down and draw in that heel. It's going to bump up. And it's going to curve around. And all the way back up to the ankle. And there's a little hole at the top of the shoe for the foot to fit in. Right there, there might be a little emphasis here on that heel. Let me erase these lines here that are in the way. We don't need those anymore. And on the other side here, some versions of, of Minnie have the her heels go down to a point. Not in this version. In this version, they're very rounded out. There's a little hole there to make sure that the foot can fit into the shoe. I'm going to go through and wipe that line out again so that I can re-emphasize it. And again, not everything you draw is going to be 100% all of the time. Everybody makes mistakes. Part of have, doing cartoons is to have fun, not worry about that. If it doesn't look right, you can always erase it or you can fix it later. Or you'll fix it on your next illustration. The big key is not to let it frustrate you. The better your hand-eye coordination gets, the more confidence that you get in drawing the better you're going to become. The way you get that confidence and that hand-eye coordination is to keep drawing. Keep working at it. Don't give up. Don't get frustrated. We're going to erase a few of the more unnecessary sketch lines because I tend to be sketchy at times. And what have we forgotten? Well, we're drawing old school Mickey here. Old school Mickey. He's got a tail. It's not usually that thick though. I'm going to jump my line down, back down just a little bit more. I'm going to add a little, little curl. Some of them during this this era have it as more of a lightning bolt I just like to use a little line just to show a tail not a big tail but a nice long enough tail later versions he tucks it into his pants or it disappears altogether don't ask me how that happened it's a cartoon a lot of things about cartoons aren't there for it to make sense and I would say right there you've got Mickey and Minnie it might look like a, a young Mickey and Minnie. It's more of the old retro pie-eyed Mickey and Minnie, almost like they use in Steamboat Willie. But in any case, they're a lot of fun. And that's how to draw Mickey and Minnie. Sorry, that took a little longer than our usual session. I'm really glad you stuck around, that you didn't get too frustrated, that you were able to follow along. Now, catch me two videos from now as we draw another cartoon character. I'm very open to your suggestions. Just drop a line in the comment section. Let me know who you'd like to learn how to draw, and I'll break it down for you, no problem. My work schedule has been a little crazy lately, but I will get more content up here as fast as I possibly can. And I really appreciate you sticking around. Make sure you like this video, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends. Thanks a lot, and thanks again for being here.